Hi, I'm Alex with Splunk Education. In this video, I'll show you how to get data into Splunk Enterprise using a Splunk Universal Forwarder. Forwarders are lightweight installations of Splunk that live on your production servers and forward data to your Splunk instance for indexing. Let's look at a simple demonstration of how forwarders work. On the Splunk indexer, we configure ports for our universal forwarder to send data over. In this example, we are going to use port 9997. On the servers we want to forward data from, we install the universal forwarder, tell them what data to send, and where to send it. That's really all there is to it. Now let's take this step by step to show you how it's done. The first step is to set up our receiver or indexer. We log in using an admin account on the Splunk Enterprise instance that will be indexing the data. From the settings menu, we select forwarding and receiving. Next, we select add new next to configure receiving. Here we specify which TCP port the indexer should listen on. In this example, we are going to use port 9997. On the following screen, we see our settings were successfully saved. We could also use the Splunk enable listen command via the CLI or edit the configuration file manually to enable the port. Now that we have our receiving indexer configured, we will set up a universal forwarder to send data. We will be installing a universal forwarder on an Apache web server, but you can forward almost any type of machine data to Splunk. To download the universal forwarder, we go to the splunk.com homepage and select Free Splunk in the top right corner. We are asked to create an account or log into an existing one. From the download page, we select the Download Now button for the Splunk Universal Forwarder. We select the OS and version for our web server and click Download Now. Splunk also provides an option to use wget if you choose. For this demo, we've already logged in and uploaded the files to our web server. Splunk can live in any accessible directory. In this demo, we'll install in the opt directory. So let's untar the archive there. We then navigate to the bin directory inside the Splunk forwarder folder. The bin directory is where we can run the executable command Splunk. We start the forwarder for the first time using the Splunk start command. We want to automatically accept the license, so we add the optional accept license argument. We're prompted to set up an admin account with a password and confirm it. To keep data from being lost, a universal forwarder should start whenever the server reboots. So we use the enable boot start command next. Now we configure the universal forwarder to send data to our receiving indexer. We use the add forward server command with arguments of the address and port of our receiving indexer. We are prompted for the username and password of the admin account we created during installation. Next, we need to tell the universal forwarder what data to send to the indexer. The add monitor command is used to tell the universal forwarder what machine data you'd like to send. Here, we are telling the forwarder to send all logs located in the www1 folder to Splunk for indexing. Returning to the receiving indexer from the search and reporting app, we click on data summary to verify the data is being indexed on our Splunk Enterprise instance. Now that we have the data indexed, we can start building reports, visualizing our data, and so much more. Thanks for joining us to learn more about forwarding data to Splunk Enterprise. To continue your journey learning about Splunk, we suggest you check out the documentation. Watch additional videos on the Splunk How-To channel, 
and register for courses from Splunk Education. Thanks for watching.